County of Wayne is now in session, City of Detroit. The Honorable Kenneth J. King presiding. You may be seated. Court is in session. Remain quiet. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, Good morning. Good morning Judge. Calling case 1357921, People of the State of Michigan versus Robert Michael the Sheriff. Defend this charge with count one, conspiracy to commit homicide, murder first degree premeditated. Count two, solicitation of a homicide. Solicitation of murder. Count three, homicide. Murder first degree premeditated. Count four, obstruction of justice. Count five, witnesses. Bribing, intimidating, interfering, criminal case. Punishable by more than ten years. Count six, perjury. Subordination other than court proceeding. Appearances for the record, please. Good morning, Your Honor. Lisa Lindsay on behalf of the people of the state of Michigan. Good morning, Robert. Please support Robert Moran, Assistant Washington. Mark Kindling on behalf of the people of Iran. Never know how many they have. Renee Cooper on behalf of Mr. Bashara. Nancy Schaller on behalf of Mr. Bashara. Two messages. Are we ready to proceed? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, we left off. The people are recalling Ms. Gillette. Yesterday we had begun to talk about the relationship you had with Mr. Bashara and you indicate that it turned intimate. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And did you enter into some type of um, relationship uh, in the BDS in Lango? Yes, ma'am. And what can was that? Can you that closer to your mouth, ma'am? We can hardly hear you. And what was that? What was what? Okay. I don't think that microphone mm -hmm. is I don't think this one is on either. Did you 
This microphone isn't on, but I'm pretty sure I can project my voice if the court wants me to okay. see. Okay. Ma'am, you entered into a relationship with Mr. Bashar that turned intimate, correct? Yes, ma'am. And did you, did Mr. Bashar refer to himself as your, him being your master? Yes, he did. And what were you to him? Slave. So you entered also into a master and slave relationship? Yes, ma'am. And what was that all about? Tell me. Why did you designate yourself master and slave? Well, in the BDSM community, it's you're either dominant, one, one partner is normally dominant and one is more submissive. Um, actually, personality-wise, I'm extremely passive, so, and um, Bob is extremely dominant and gregarious and like, take charge, and so he was the dominant figure and I was the submissive figure. Okay, so, but you referred to yourself as his slave and he referred to you as his slave? Yes, ma'am. And you referred to him as your master? I did in writings. I didn't actually call him that. Okay, yeah. and as it relates to your writing, when you would address him in your writing, would you always address him in uppercase uh, letters? Yes. And when you refer to yourself in your writings, you would use lowercase letters? Generally, yes. And even when you were referring to other people in the community, when you referred to him, you used uppercase? Yes. And when you referred to yourself, you used lowercase? Yes. So this, uh, this went throughout every aspect of your life? No. This was just um, in blogs and online with the BDSM. that website. Okay. Now, when you first entered into the relationship with Mr. Bashar, did he have a profile on alt.com? Yes, he did. How did he designate himself on that profile? As a master? Did he tell you about his marital status on that profile? Yes, ma'am. He said he was a widower. So when you first had contact with Mr. Bashar on the website, he indicated he was a widower. Is yes, that he did. And did you, at some point in time, begin to suspect he was not being truthful about his wife being dead? Yes, I did. What happened after you began to suspect that? I confronted him, and he told me that, he no, he was not really a widower, but that they were separated. Okay. Did he tell you why he told you... Did he t now, let me back up a little bit. Before you began to suspect that he was not a widower, did he tell you in person that his wife had been deceased? Yes. And what did he tell you about his wife being deceased? Um, from what I can recall, it was she had been deceased for a few years, either two or three, he told me, and that he was raising his teenage daughter and that did he mention he had a teenage son well yeah his son was in college okay. so he was not at home so initially he told you he was deceased raising a, a teenage daughter by himself correct his you wife was deceased. yes his wife was the same thing you confronted him he said now he's separated correct correct and what did he tell you about the separation um that they he basically told me he was separated. He didn't put that on his profile because um, well, there was a lot of women, I guess, that wouldn't date you if you're just separated. Um, so essentially he told you he was widowed, so he did more women. Right. What else did he say about his, his wife? I don't recall him saying anything, just that they were separated, <laughs> that they had been separated for a couple years. And I what did he say about his sex life? That was all. Um, 
Did he say he had been sexually intimate with his wife? Yes. Did he say it, that it's, it had ceased? Yes. How long did he say it had been since he had relations with his wife? Well, I think when he first told me he was separated, I assumed he was separated as far as they no longer live together, so... Um, Ma'am, yeah. do you recall testifying under oath? That's a yes or no question? Yes. Okay. Do you recall saying at that time that he said that they had not been sexually intimate, they had not been affectionate, that she was extremely negative toward him and very critical? Do you recall? Yes. Did Mr. Bashar tell you those things? Yes, he did. Could you articulate what Mr. Bashar said about his wife being critical and negative toward him? Um, after I found out he wasn't actually separated physically, he told me they lived in the same house, but then he started to tell me how the relationship was. And tell me what he said. That they were not affectionate, that they uh, had no sexual relations, that they hadn't for years, that they did nothing together, that they were basically living two separate lives. Um, she went her way and did her thing with her friends and co-workers, and he did his stuff with his friends, um, that did they stayed together basically for the children. Did he say he was happy in the marriage? No. Did he say she was happy in the marriage? No. Did he say anything about the living arrangements within the home? Yes, he told me that he was living in a the guest room, that he had moved to the guest room. So he said they were living in separate bedrooms? Separate bedrooms, yes. And did he ever tell you anything about feeling emasculated? No, he never used that word. Did you tell Janet Lehman that Bob Bashara told you he felt emasculated by his wife? I don't think I said Bob said it. That was my word. I used the word. Okay. So let's back this up a little bit. Did you use the word emasculation when you were describing the situation of Bob's home life to Janet Lehman? Yes. But now you're quibbling about whether you said Bob said it or not, correct? Mm -hmm. No, ma'am. You asked me if Bob told, told me that, and I, he didn't. But you told her? Yes. Correct. That Bob described to you feelings of emasculation? Correct. Although he never used the word emasculated. Correct. He described a situation where he was essentially emasculated. Correct? Yes. Now, at some point in time in 2009, did you move somewhere? Yes. Initially, when you met Mr. Bashara, you were living where? In Dearborn Heights. In December of 2009, did you move someplace else? No, ma'am. I moved August, December, August um, 2009. You moved August of 2009. Mm -hmm. And where was it that you moved? To Gross Point Park. And when you moved to Gross Point Park at that point in time, did you move to a property that was owned by Mr. Bashir? Yes, I did. And where was that property located? On Mack Avenue. And where was that property located in relationship to the place you refer to as the dungeon? It was one of the apartments above the above the building and the dungeon was in the basement of the building. And at that point in time, did you and Mr. Bashara uh, began to see each other in the dungeon, dungeon almost daily? No. Well, how often would you see him in the dungeon now that you're living right above the dungeon? Uh, about twice a week, maybe. About twice a week you would meet him at the dungeon. Yeah. yeah. Now, at some point in 2009, do you begin to wish to break off the relationship with Mr. Bashara? Yes. And do you see, send him an email indicating that you want to break it off with him? Yes, I did. And did he respond to that email? Yes, he did. I'm handing you uh, exhibit number 50, or Mr. Hindenlang will hand you exhibit number 57. And I believe council has a copy of this. Do you recognize the email that I have handed you? Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm just going to have her read uh, highlighted portions of the email, but the email in its entirety will be introduced. And was this email sent to Mr. Bashar on January 1st, 2009, at around 2.50 in the a.m. hours? Yes, ma'am. 
And do you begin the email, Master Bob? Yes. Could you uh, read your email to him to highlight a portion starting with the second paragraph? But you are you, with your boisterous laugh and easygoing ways, romantic, competitive, playful, wearing your heart on your sleeve. I can't protect you from this. It must be done. Um, there are places that are okay. marked out. Uh, okay, you can't. No. Read, uh, I'll give you, I'll stand behind you so we can read the next sentence. We both? We both made choices that now demand payment. I should have cut loose long ago. I tried. Please believe me, I just can't do it anymore. I have never been a good liar, but I've put on a brave face for a while. You were wrong to lie to me, and it makes me sad to know you will do it again. The next paragraph starting at? I am here. But here? But here it, it all is, and I am not the other woman type. I am too soft, too emotional, too quick to picture the other lives involved. It was all a fantasy, a warm, loving, wonderful dream, and the holidays helped to wake me up. Um, and I can't be alone. Your life has a timetable, and you have explained your plan. Um, remember me and know that we what we had was real. It was not long enough for either of us, and it has to end here. Rachel. And you signed that. When you addressed it, Master Bob, you said Master Bob in uppercase, you signed your name, Rachel, lowercase? Yes. And what was his response? Well, strike that. What's his response to you um, January 1st, 2009 at 11.40 a.m.? Yes, ma'am. How does he start off that response? Um, slave R. Slave R. Mm -hmm. And is the slave R written in lower case letters? Yes. What does he say? It looks like no, no, no. You are so wrong. Damn it, I love you, and I do not want to lose you ever. We are perfect for each other, and you know it. I have asked. I have asked for a year, and you need to understand. My relationship with her is over. No sex or feeling. Hell, she said she is not happy and wants to part. So we are working on a plan. Hell, I've given you all of me, and that, is that not enough? So Mike has finally worked on you. I knew that was not good. I will not let you go. You are a caller to me, and I want you, period. I will see you on Monday, and we will discuss this. MB. Now let me just ask you a little bit about this email. Um, he indicates that somebody named Mike has worked on, worked on you. Were you speaking with somebody named Mike and he's telling you to get out of the relationship with Mr. Bashara? No, but Mr. Bashara thought he was telling me that. Mr. Bashara thought, and what did Mr. Bashara think? What did Mr. Bashara do in response to him thinking somebody named Mike was telling you to get out of the relationship? I don't know. Did Mr. Bashara indicate that he had contact with Mike and told Mike to get out of your life? Who was this? Yes. So Mr. Bashara contacted this person named Mike and said, leave Rachel alone. I believe so. Now, also in this email, Mr. Bashar responds, you are collared to me. What does that mean? That's just another BDSM term that basically you belong to me, you're mine. Um, so after this, do you decide to stay in the relationship? Not because of this email, but yes, after this. I okay. Did. You decide to stay with him knowing he was married. Correct? Yes, ma'am. And he had given you a timetable, is that correct? Yes, he did. And it was his words, timetable, correct? Yes. And whenever he would talk about the um, situation with Jane and the eventual separation and the divorce from her, he would use the term timeline, timetable, something of that like? Yes. Sometimes he would say he, he was on a timeline or a timeline or... Date, deadline? Objection. Uh, I was raised. I was raised. But he did use the term timeline. Yes, and he also used the word plan. He had a plan. He had a plan. Mm -hmm. And what supposedly was this plan? That when his youngest child 
graduated high school that they would actually divorce and tell everybody and they would actually separate and then he and I would start a life together. So you, you're staying in the relationship now and do, do you two begin to go uh, to different locations together and participate in, in BDSM activities? Yes. Did you ever go to some place in Milan, Michigan? Yes. Tell me about that. Um, it was a property that an individual owned who had erected a, a large like warehouse type barn. And what was that called? Uh, the Reformatory. And when you would go to the Reformatory, would there be other couples there participating in these activities? Yes. And did you meet someone by the name of Patrick Webb there? Yes. Now, did you become frustrated with the pace of the relationship? Yes. Uh, in 2010, did you receive a ring? Yes, I did. Tell me about the ring you received. Um, he told me that it was his great grand or great aunt's who had passed away, and that she had left it to him. And why did he tell you he was giving you this ring? I think it was after another time that I had tried to break up, and it was a way to convince me that he was serious about me, and that his intentions were that one day we would get married, and that this was not really an engagement ring, but a promise ring. <laughs> So he indicated it was a promise ring. Yeah. And when he when he was presenting this promise ring, did he try to put it on a particular hand? Yes, he did. What hand did he try to get the promise ring on? Uh, my left hand. And what do you uh, know the significance is of wearing a ring on your left hand? Yes, ma'am. What was the significance of wearing a ring on your left hand? It would mean you were engaged. Okay. So he was trying to give you the promise ring and put it on your left hand. Did you put it on your left hand? No. What did you tell him about not putting it on your left hand? That he wasn't free to do that. that and when he was free, that we could move it. But right now, he wasn't free to um, to even talk about marriage or anything. But you gladly took it and put it on your right hand? Yes. During the course of your relationship, did he try to get you to move it to your left hand to signify you were officially engaged? Yes, he did. Approximately how many times did he do that? I don't recall. Twice, maybe? And each time, why did you refuse? Because he, the times that he did it, I knew he wasn't divorced yet. And did he give you a necklace? Yes. Would you tell you the significance of the necklace was? Um, that it was made from the studs of his father's tuxedo, and that he was given them and didn't know what to do with them, so he had them made into a necklace for me. I'm showing counsel exhibits number 108 and 109. I believe they see what's your introduction. We've seen them, and that's correct. Uh, you see? Okay, I'm going to ask you to look at 109 and tell me, is that a photograph of the ring that was presented to you as a promise ring? Yeah. Yes. And also, we're showing you Exhibit 108. Is that the necklace that Mr. Bashar said was made out of his father's yes, tuxedo studs? Yes, ma'am. Now, did something else happen significant between you and Mr. Bashar in 2010 in terms of your living arrangements? In 2000 of, um, August of 2010, I moved from his apartment to another apartment in Gross Point Park. And where was that at? Um, St. Clair Shore, on mm -hmm. St. Clair Street, I mean. Okay. Uh, did, there, and did there ever come a point in time in 2010 when uh, you bought a house from Mr. Bashara? Well, or when you get, or did, kind of. Okay, tell me about that. You say kind. Of. Tell me about you receiving a house from Mr. Bashara. Um, it was one of his rental properties, and what year are we talking about? To, I believe it was the early summer of 2010. Okay, tell me about that. And he was going to. He needed to sell it for some reason. I don't really recall everything. Um, and what was the location? It was on Kadju. Oh, do you recall the address? Yes, 30, 30, 
$35.59, Kaji. Or was it fifty? Was it fifty nine thirty five? Yes, sorry. Fifty nine thirty five Kaji. And what did Mr. Shaw tell you about that address? That it was one of his rental properties. It was the first one he ever bought when he was eighteen. Um, did he tell you he owned it free and clear, or did he tell you he owned it with his wife, Jane Bashara? He told me he owned it with Jane. Okay. And so what happens with that house? Um, he told me that he needed to sell it for some reason, and um, first, I think when I, he first told me about it, he was just going to sell it. Then within the next few weeks, the story changed to um, he was going to sell it, but now he decided to put it into sh into a short sale. So you put it into a short sale. Yeah, and I'm not sure what all that is, means. Okay, but, but at any rate, did that property get transferred to you? Yes. Tell me about the property getting transferred to you. He wanted me to go with him to the title company because his mother was had loaned him the money or was going to loan him the money. Did he tell you his money was his mother was loaning him the money to, to do the short sale? to buy the house, okay. yes. And so he wanted me to go with him to sign the title so the title would be in my name. Okay, so the title was put in your name, correct? Yes. He told you his mother loaned him the money to do this, correct? Correct. Did he ever tell you that his wife knew or that he had told his wife that he was transferring this property to you? No. Do you want to again break up from Mr. Bashara sometime in 2010? Yes. And do you send him another email? Yes. Seven. And do you exhibit 70 counsels? him a um, email dated June 17, 2010 at 1041 a.m. with the subject line, if I had to do it over again? Yes, ma'am. And begin reading that. How do you address it? MB. And is that in uppercase levels? Yes. Go ahead, read it. If, I had, if I had it to do over again, what would I do? I would not have gone on with a man who was married. But I was so new and confused, not by my morals or by what was right, but by this lifestyle and what I was exposed to. It has been a torturous year for me, and I've struggled with this. We've had several near misses, and you've always talked me back. But I think in the back of my mind, in the back of your mind and in mine, we both know, knew this day would come eventually. Part of this is because you are married and will be untangling that mess for another year or so. And a part of it is because I have been excluded so many times from your life that it's beginning not to even affect me anymore. Another part is the lack of honesty and creeping about that has become a natural part of our lives. None of these are good foundations for a life together. I don't want you to beg. I don't want you to cry. I don't want you to try to change my mind this time. For once, I would really, really like it if you would just listen to me. If this was some whim or way of getting attention, it would not happen every few months. If I was sure about us and wanted to be here, I would be able to relax and accept it. Don't you see that I've been trying to break away from you for a while now and have not been strong enough? Instead of pulling me back in and making me cry and feel bad, why don't you finally let me go? And the part where you say, I don't want you to cry, beg, I don't want you to cry, when you would try to break up with him, what were some of the things that Mr. Bashar would do? Um... Depending on the timing, sometimes he would come over late at night. Um, he had a key to my apartment, um, and he would cry and try to talk me back into going back with him. So he would bring, um, come to my work, bring flowers, bring lunch. He would call my children and try to get them to intercede and talk to, talk. He tried to get me to talk to him again. When he would call your children, would your children come, call you and say, Mr. Bashar has been calling us, telling us about the situation? Yes. And would you confront him about that? Would you, would you say, why are you calling my children? Yeah. And what did Mr. Bashar say, why was he calling your children? 
because he was, he would tell me because he was in love with me, and he wanted my children to know it, and he wanted me to know he was serious, and he was not going to let me go. Do you ever recall occasions when he would come to your home and just sit out front and cry? Objection leading. Okay, I would, I would say. Tell me about what he would do in front of your house after when you were trying to break up with him. The last time I tried to break up with him, um, I came home and he was sitting in a lawn chair blocking the door that I needed to get into to get into my house and he was crying and talking very loud and so I got back in my car and I left. Um, when I came back about I think an hour later he was still there. Um, now read us Mr. Bashar's response to the email that you just and was his response on on 6 18 2010 at 403 a.m. Yes, ma'am. Hello and good morning, my slave. I do not understand about about how you can love someone. Stay with me. And now, as we are about to be us, you wish to leave. It is true. I have rescued us. You say you love me, and I am unlike no other. I cannot imagine, and will not do so, a life without you. Plain and simple. No one has ever given me the care and love you have, and now you wish to throw it all away. As for your being excluded, it is true that this has not been a two-way street, and for that I am sorry. But I know this, but know this, what we have and what we will be about is so special, we cannot let it go. It has almost been two years, and I am sorry if you have been tortured. I like to think of us as evolving and growing. I am ready to make a life-changing event for you and for us. And at the time it is happening, you again wish to leave me. If it is in the Bible it says love conquers all, then it will bring us to where we want to be, where you want to be, in a home with a man you say you love. I am here, and I will not release you. I am your man, and you are my woman. I remain Master Bob. In 2010, he tells you he was ready to make a life-changing event. Did he tell you what that life-changing event was going to be? No, I assumed it was a divorce. Now, as you two are talking about forming a life together, do you have um, issues about you forming a life with him? Were you concerned about finances? Yes. Okay. Tell me about why you were confirmed concerned about starting a life with Mr. Bashara and how it related to finances. Well, just in the three years of being with him, or at that point, two and a half years or whatever the time frame was, I had already seen that um, we went out a lot. He spent a lot of money. Um, he seemed to be um, maybe living a, a beyond his means. And I, but I wasn't really sure because I wasn't party to his finances, but um, I know he had trouble with some of the creditors for some of his rentals. I, I've overheard arguments, so I knew there was some kind of financial, something was amiss. I, and were you concerned about how he was going to afford to start a life with you after a divorce? I mean, a normal couple, no. <laughs> you just go to work and you start a new life. The way he was living, yes, I was a little concerned. You weren't, con you weren't concerned about the impact of the divorce on his finances? No. Do you recall uh, writing him an email uh, on October 11, 2010, Exhibit 69? Yes, ma'am. Could you read, highlight portions of that email? 
I could only come up with four things that are negatives to me that I worry about or think might cause us problems in the future. Could you read a little bit slower because you're reading kind of fast? Some of them I have mentioned before to you. They are not huge deals, but the finances thing really bought, concerns me. Partly from things you have mentioned and thinking that you have maybe lived above your means a little in the past. Also, that with Jane you made two good incomes coming in, and what I make is nothing like that. I don't want you to have to give up things or a certain style of life, and to understand this is gross point, and there is a certain amount of appearances thing we really will have to do, but there are many ways we can do with less, and I would hate in the future to ever borrow money from your mother. Now, a moment ago, I just asked you, was there concerns about how a divorce would affect finance? Correct? Yes. In your email, clearly you're talking about how he would deal with the loss of Jane's income. Yes. Is that correct? Correct. And from talking to Mr. Bashara, did you know that Jane was the primary breadwinner? No, I just knew she made a very good salary, and I was a secretary at Wayne State, and I knew what I made. Okay. So were you aware that not having Jane's income would negatively affect objection leading okay. Okay. What did Jane what did the loss of Jane's income what would the loss of Jane's income have as an impact on your life with Mr. Bashar? I was concerned that he would have to get used to living in a smaller way. Uh, with only his income and my little income, it, the lifestyle, his lifestyle might change a lot. And you discussed the lifestyle changes, potential lifestyle changes with Mr. Bashara. Um, this might have been the only time. I don't remember talking about it a lot. But in, at any rate, does Mr. Bashara respond to the concerns about lifestyle changes and his answer to your email? Please. Yes, he does. Okay. I want you to read... And are you looking at an email from Mr. Bashar to you dated October 11th, 2010 at 11.29 a.m.? Yes, ma'am. Please read Mr. Bashar's response to you. Well, I have been accustomed to the best in life, and yes, I do keep a lot of stuff, for one never knows when one needs stuff, but I would live in one room and be happy as long as you are with me. And fortunately, I will never have to do that. As for my mom, she is most generous, but I do not impose on her and, uh, money and good could nature. Up. Could you back up? Yes. Because you did not read that correctly. Oh. As for my mom, start there. As for my mom, she is most generous, but I try not to impose on her money and good nature. Finally, as for the income I will be missing, oh well. Again, I would rather be poor and happy than rich and not so. These are things you should not worry about, and when we are together, I will lay out my future a future with you at my side. I, as well, think you are pretty neato, keen, and most swell, and I am your master, Bob. So in the email to you, Mr. Bashara does acknowledge that he would lose income by divorcing Jane Bashara, correct? Yes. And his response was, oh well. Correct? Yes. yes. <clears throat> Now, do you, in October, more of October of 2010, um, are you having more ongoing, in-depth talks with Mr. Bashara about your relationship and the nature of your relationship? Yes. And in October of 2010, are you once again attempting to break up with Mr. Bashara? Yes. Okay. Could you tell me what's going on in October of 2000, 2010, why you're attempting to break up with him? I had, over the course of the years, there had been times when I had found emails and communication between him and other women. Um, and in October, in, late summer of 2010 
I found him twice um, talking to other women online and one of them I think he met and one he was trying to set up a meeting with. Okay. So not only was he cheating on his wife with you, he was cheating on you, his wife, and now he got other women. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So you're upset with him because he's married, correct? Yes. Now you're upset with him because he's cheating on you with other women, correct? Yes. And you tried to break up with him again? Yes. And you sent him an email? Yes, I did. At 68? I believe that's the great 68. Wait a minute. You sent him this email on October 11, 2010 at 4.43.08 p.m. Uh, could you read what you told him? I thought we had agreed to, or that you had agreed, to let us have this space while you work things out with your plan, with the final steps of the divorce, etc. I don't want to be involved in your divorce, and I will be if we are seeing each other on a regular basis. I am willing to wait and not date and not seek out anyone else. I told you all of that the other night. Just because we have had some good IMs and some conversation doesn't mean that I still don't need this time. Maybe I misunderstood. So at this point in time, you told him you needed to separate from him because you needed him to work out this stuff with his divorce and everything? Yes. Does he respond to that email to you? Yes. Does he respond on October 12, 2010 at 12 to 5 a.m.? Yes. What does he say? We have developed a true sense and connection even through my situation for the past two years. I have on many occasions told you how I feel and for you to feel and for you to feel me even when we are miles apart. Just because I am here and soon leaving does not mean that I have a connection with her. Quite the opposite. As for you being in the way, you are not. And as for you being a part of my leaving and involved, you are not. I am and I will not expose you to this, but for you to say that the plan is to have us be removed from each other is not a reality. I know what you want, me free. I am your man and your master, but you must fully trust me as you say you do now. I will slow down our meetings as we have been together a lot, but I cannot cease to be with you and see to not have us continue so you can feel better. This serves neither of us. Do you not think I protect you always? Am I not here to comfort you? Your going back and forth must cease. You must trust in me. I am the master, and if you are my true slave, you will obey me and trust me. The end is near, and I will have us together like never before. You should feel good about me, you and us. I want us to talk face to face, so enjoy your time and know I will not just jump back to where we were, but you are my slave, my girl. You do not like you do not like to make decisions, so do not. Let your heart and mind trust fully in me. Kneel before me. Come to me. Put your fears to rest, for I will, let, I will not let you fail. fall. You are my love, and I want you always. Did you sign it? One second. Ms. Gillette, you mentioned something about having good high things. What is high things? Um, instant messages. Oh. I'm sorry, Jay. And does he sign that Master Bob? Yes, ma'am. So during this time that you are seeing uh, Mr. Bashara, you know he's married, you are basically not coming out in public too much with him in Gross Point? Correct. But does Mr. Bashara have some significant contact with your friends and family? Oh, yes. Tell me about that. Um right from the beginning of our relationship, probably in December of 2008, we had just started seeing each other, and that was the first time um, he met my daughter. Um, he had gone to family weddings with me. He had gone How many to... How family weddings did he go to with you? Um, well, he went to my niece's in 2009, I believe. And where, where was that at? Um, Lincoln Park or Livonia. Okay. Um, he had gone to several functions at work. 
um, gone to my boss's house for parties. And when he went to your boss's house for parties, how did he introduce himself? As my boyfriend. Okay. Yeah. Uh, where else did he go? Um, we went out to dinner several times with some of my girlfriends. Um, he came to my work a lot, probably. At, at the beginning, it was at least once a week. It got more towards the end, but he would come. He would uh, meet me for lunch and come up upstairs all the way to my office. Bring flowers. And talk to all my coworkers and talk to my boss. Everybody knew him. And uh, at your daughter's wedding, did he come? Yes, that was 2011. And where? What month and year? I mean, yeah. What? December 2011. And he came. What state? South Carolina. Now, after this email in 2010, the holidays are approaching. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. What did he tell you about the holidays and spending the holidays with you? I think I was upset because it was once again holidays alone and he promised to spend New Year's Eve with me and on that 2010, well, December 31st, 2010, I was going to South Carolina to um, see my daughter. Her wedding was the, pre the next year, but I went down there and I was there for a week and he flew down, uh, I believe, New Year's Eve and we did spend, or New Year's, maybe the 30th? And we spent New Year's Eve together in South Carolina. And did you spend uh, in 2000, that was 2010 or that, 2011? That was 2010. In 2011, did you spend time away? Yes, that was my daughter's wedding. We were gone for um, about seven or eight days, I believe. And what month are we talking about? December. From what to what? Um, December 26th to, I think, January 2nd. Now, you decide to stay with Mr. Bashara, notwithstanding the fact that he's still married and he's cheating on you. You go back again, correct? Yes, ma'am. So now we're in 2011, correct? Yes. And what's happening with you in 2011? Are you happy about the situation? No. And are you letting him know that you're unhappy about the situation, that he is still married? Yes. And um, do you let him know in an email in March 2011 that you're not happy with the way things are going. Yes. Did you send him an email on the 31st, excuse me, on March 3rd complaining about the situation? Yes. And does he respond on uh, March 4th, 2011 at 12.03 a.m.? I'm not sure when he responded. And for 67 and exhibit 67. I believe counsel stipulates 67. Correct. Proceed. Okay, could you read Mr. Bashara's response to you when you're once again complaining about being in a relationship with a married man? Yes. My slave, so I have read and I understand, but what you say about you, wonder what you are doing. What you are doing and what have been doing is building a life with me. Hello, have we not built something special? Have we not grown close, very close? My situation is secondary to what we have, and yet... Let me stop in you there. When he says, my situation, is he talking about his marriage to his wife? Yes, ma'am. He says, my situation, my wife, is secondary to you. Correct? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. My second situation is secondary to what we have, and yet ending soon. But what we have is real. You serve me, care for me, and make me feel wonderful. And I am here to guide you, protect you, make you feel great, and yes, love you. So while I feel your frustration with the time frame, and while I understand you feel guilty, you will stop this now. I have chosen you. You are here with me. As for you always feeling this way, I cannot stop you from your thinking, but will tell you that I have never wavered in my feelings or our plans. And you can throw all the cliches around, but that is not me. I am real. I am here. And I want you for the rest of my life. 
They say the proof is in the pudding, and I have not backed off. And when your doubt has taken over, I have brought you back to me and to us. So if you must have guilt, deal with it. But there are other emotions to bring forth, ones that soothe the soul, not cloud it. Like I said, focus on what we have and what we are building, not, not that which makes you sad. Hence my task in writing so you can release your feelings, and we will open up and deal with what bothers you. But I know and also know how to stop your guilt. Soon, my slave, soon. How does he sign it? MB. Now, in March of 2011, you still believe that he is with his wife, correct? He's I'm still so married. What and date? In March of 2011, he's still married. You know this, correct? Yes, ma'am. And at this point, you want him to divorce her soon. I'll rephrase. Do you want the divorce to happen soon or you're leaving? Yes, I had told him that. On more than one occasion? Yes, but... Okay. Yeah. Does there ever come a point in time in May of 2011 he gives you some type of news you've been waiting for? He actually didn't tell me till later in the summer. Okay. Later in the summer he tells you what? that the divorce has been final since May. So sometime, and does this, does he give you this news in the context of you pressing him? No, him? I was trying to break up with him again. You were trying to break up with him again. He says, at this point in time, he says, hey, I'm divorced now. I actually got finalized. She's leaving, Your Honor. She's putting words. Okay, tell me what happened. <coughs> you're, you're trying to break up with him and you're having an issue. Yes. the. What I recounted before with the finding about the two girls, I had my dates mixed up. It wasn't the end of the summer 2010. It was the end of the summer 2011. I had just caught him with these, talking to these other girls. I actually met one of them, and her and I had a drink, and we talked. And that was the time when he was at my house crying and um I really thought I was going to stay broken up this time. <laughs> um, and it, what changed your mind? He talked me back into he. That's when he told me that he the divorce was final, that we could we could go on with our plans, and he really started um, wanting to go look for houses right away. Okay, we're going to get into that in a minute. So at this point in time, you're having a discussion about you're trying to break up with him. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. And it's at this point in time he says the divorce is final. Yes. And that's in the summer months? It was, I think it was August or September of 2011. Okay. Could it have been earlier? 2000. Well, well, never mind about that right now. But at any rate, he tells you, um, I'm divorced now. Yes. Did you ask to see any type of proof that he was divorced? Not at that time. Okay. And I'm sending you, I'm going to ask you to look at exhibit number 65. I believe counsel has a copy of the instant message at exhibit 65. We do. I ask you to look at that. Is that an instant message chat you were having with Mr. Bashir on June 3rd? 2011 at 10.25 a.m.? Yes. And does he reference something about being divorced? Yes. Okay. The context of this is, is this a conversation about him cheating on you? Yes. Read what Mr. Bashara indicates to you. You moving for the admission of number 65? Yes, I am, Your Honor. Proceed. You mentioned you will have to live with the way I am or leave. Now that I am divorced, the hiding and lying will stop. I don't need your permission to walk away. Oh, sorry. I said, I don't need your permission to walk away if that's what I choose to do. He responded, you have the right to do so. I do not want you to. This is why we need to talk face to face, not on here. I responded, you have lied, on your, lied to your own wife and family, whom I know you love and care about, and it has come easy. I have watched you, so I know it will continue on with them and with me. So he tells you in this email in June that he is divorced. Yeah. Is that correct? Yes. I'm sorry. I had my dates wrong. So now that he tells you he's divorced, do you believe he's divorced? Yes. 
Now, you've already indicated that in that email, uh, that instant message chat, that he lies to you and he lies to your wife. Yes. Given the fact that you knew he lied to you and your wife, why did you not have him show you proof of divorce papers then and there? I don't know. So you stayed in the relationship and you said earlier he began at that point. Whose idea was it to begin to go house hunting together? Yours or his? His. So you're attempting to break up with him. He now says he's divorced and now he wants to go house hunting. Yes. If he had not told you he was divorced and he had not told you you were house hunting, do you think you would try to stay broken up with him? Yes. So the house hunting was an enticement for you to stay into the relationship? Yes. So you began to go house hunting, is that correct? Yes, we did. Tell me about that. Um, at first we just drove around air, the Gross Point areas um, looking at signs. We saw a few houses. It was um, pretty casual. went to a few open houses. Um, on Sundays, um, we did all this without a real estate agent. We just kind of were real casual at the beginning of the search. In the fall, we started looking more aggressively. We got real estate agents um, to work with us, and they so that we could have access to houses and know what was on the market. Can you tell me what real estate agents you started working with? Um, Johnston and Johnston. Is that the only one? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's this, the only one I know. Keller Young or something? Keller? Yes. The very first house we were interested in was a Keller house. That was the sign on the... That, so, we, yeah, we did contact them. And what, what street was this house on? Uh, the first house we had serious interest in was on Bishop. And did you make an offer on that house? I don't recall. I do know that we had inspection done. So I don't know at what process you make the offer the, after or before. And how is, this, how is this house hunting going to be financed? The house hunting? How is, who's going to pay for the house? Um, I assumed he would. <laughs> now, even as you're house hunting, does Mr. Bashar try to tell you about how your life is going to be together uh, once he's, now that he's divorced, now that he's quote unquote divorced? Um, how our life is going to be? Does he write you long emails uh, laying out what your life is going to be like together? Yes, usually when I was upset, either tried to break up or was upset about some other issue, I would get a very long romantic, sentimental email and reply. So, yeah. Council, we'll see you later. Introduction of 64. Now, did Mr. Bashar send you an email on July 15, 2011 at 9.20 in the a.m. hours? Yes. Could you tell, could you relate that to the judge? You want me to read it? Yes. Good morning. I was going to share this with you on Wednesday, but you know me. I have something to share or say or do. I cannot wait or hold it in. I guess I'm like an excited boy who wants to blurt it out. Could you slow down your reading just a little? Okay, you ahead. and I have been together for almost three years and during that time have experienced a lot and had had wonderful times and moments and yes, some not so wonderful ones. Through it all, I have been here and you as well at my side. I doubt that I can find someone as close to what I want in my life for the rest of my life. We gel in so many ways, yet there has been friction, mostly centered around my situation. Stop, I'm stopping there. The friction centered around his situation being his wife. Yes. Well, his marriage. His yes. marriage. Well, marriage includes a wife, correct? Yeah. Okay, continue. Now coming to a close. I have made some poor choices and I have made you feel really badly. Something I had no intention of doing, as I love you, always will. I want to paint a picture for you that I have had gelling in my head for months now, some of which you know and some you may not. I was up late writing and thinking about this, 
And like I have said, I have given us and our future a lot of hard, wonderful thought. It is September and I will be ready to move out. I keep going back to the cottage, a place we both liked and could see us in. It is a short bike ride to the village. I said I need to sell Middlesex to buy another. Well, I am finding that I do not, knowing soon that it will sell. I will be in and together in evenings and weekends, we paint and prepare and take our time in making this our place. More to come. But now we jump and it is December and we are on our way driving to South Carolina to the wedding. Our car full of centerpieces, booze, and all sorts of fun stuff to make a great wedding. By now, Kaju has sold and we have a pocket full of money <coughs> and by now you have what you need for Kendall's dress and wedding. We have a wild week full of laughs, tears, and merriment. Now we begin. We return home to the cottage. I think I might name it that. And we begin. You and I, except there is one change. You no longer work at WSU, which is Wayne State University. You take all your vacation time, sick time, and personal time and leave. Um, I and you will find something here. You can help me manage the rentals and I see you working part time at Borders or a small business. Also, there is the ability to really help me develop my United business with doing some telemarketing and mostly doing mailings and then follow-up. Hell, now, I'm... Let me stop you there for just a minute. Mm -hmm. Do you recall watching a Dateline interview with Mr. Bashara and he said that the life together was your fantasy? Yes, ma'am. And he said you wanted the white picket fence, correct? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Bashar was telling the world that you were the one who was pushing for a life together. You recall that? Yes, ma'am. But his email says different? Yes. Continue reading. <clears throat> I know by your efforts you can make us 12, 17 K a year. Your life is a collage of doing community projects with and without me. Working in a part-time, full-time variety, doing gardening, reading, just plain relaxing, keeping the house and serving me as you have tried. I know you have said that when we are together you can do a better job of this, but for the most part your life is calm. You can do as you please during the day, setting your own schedule. I will continue repping for United and the rentals. You may ask how this can happen from a money standpoint. Well, with a house in a lower price range and hence lower expenses, I and we can make it very nicely with the money I get from Middlesex. I will then have no mortgage, only taxes, insurance, and health insurance. You will make that place our dream home, your dream home, a dream you have said you wanted, a large front porch, a place you can call your own, and with the resources you do not have to work. You would serve me as my submissive and slave, but most importantly as my girl, my lady, my woman. But you know this role. I will leave all that up to you if you and we can find one who is perfect to come to us great. If okay. not... I'm going I'm to back you up. Could you start with as for the poly situation? As for the poly situation, I will leave that up to you. If you or we find one who is perfect to come to us great, if not, you are all I want and need. Now, let, I'm going to ask you, what does this poly situation mean? What, what's he referring to the poly situation? There had been talk off and on during our relationship because of being involved in the lifestyle. There are a lot of people who are poly. And what does poly mean? Um, and, and when you say poly, you're spelling it. It's P-O-L-Y. Yeah, polymorous, um, where there may be the more, three or more people in a relationship together. Um, so you and Mr. Bashari had talked about possibly having a poly yes. relationship. You, Mr. Bashari, and bringing another person into the relationship. Yes. Would this have been another male? Or another female? We actually had talked about both scenarios at times. I mean, what had finally been settled on? I thought it would stop him from cheating. Okay, let me stop you there. Let's back this up. You agreed to enter into a poly relationship. 
because you thought bringing somebody else in would stop him from cheating. Yes, ma'am. It wasn't your belief was the only way you could hold on to him to prevent him from cheating is for you to, to participate in it? Well, I wouldn't necessarily have to participate, but he did assure me that if we had somebody else in our relationship, that that would be enough, that he would stop. He promised that he would stop. Can I just ask you, why would you want to stay with somebody that didn't want to be with you exclusively and with all his heart and soul? I can't answer that. So as a solution to hold on to him and to check his cheating, you were going to participate into this poly lifestyle if he wanted you to? Yes, ma'am. Because you were his slave? No, because I didn't want to lose him. Because you loved him just that much? Yeah. Continue on. I will not be on any sites and will not contact anyone. You will for me if directed. I have now learned my lesson. Hey, a master who learns. Yes, I am. I am not proud of what I did and more importantly how I have hurt you. I love you and I can only ask you for a second chance to show you that I am serious. You have said in the past that I only mention these things when we have issues, but that is not true. You worry about assimilating into Gross Point. Well, do not. I am a huge figure here and have many friends, but also you, also we, you, and I will make new ones. So, so Rachel, here is the picture I have painted and certainly want and need your brush strokes to make it complete. All I have talked about, we have talked about, and what I promised you for the past year is about to come real. One, because I truly care for you, and two, do feel badly that the timeline has not been sooner and you have put up with my living situation. Know that our life together will be a lot different. Not having her in my house and the need to hide will be a huge rock lifted off of us, a rock I am lifting now. So I will not offer you my apology again. Now let me stop you there. He described the situation as lifting a, with his wife in the house on Middlesex as if lifting a huge rock off of him. Yes. And he said he was in the process of lifting it now. Yes. Go ahead. I realize I do not want a life without you. I hope you also know that I am not perfect and hiding and lying has been needed to cover us, but not to you. I will now stop the lying and know that it is in my hope that I can regain your trust, something I value. I stand here naked, not really, before you, telling you from my heart what I sincerely feel. It is my hope that on Wednesday we go to Mario's after your work and talk and reconnect. May I have this dance, little girl. I am Master Bob. Just also, Bob. Now. I'm sorry. When is that email dated? May. No. July. Oh, I'm sorry. Ma'am, look at the top of the page. Yes, I see it. No, I want the top of the first page. Mm -hmm. I want to get it 67 if you tell the judge today. Yes. July 15, 2011. Thank you. Yeah. Exhibit 64. Now, do you agree to meet him? Yes, I did. He painted a really good picture for you, correct? Yes. Yes, ma'am. And you bought into it? Yes. So you're continuing the house hunt? Yes. And does he send you a follow-up email uh, the next day on July Exhibit number 62, July 16, 2001. Yes. And again, are you having issues with his fidelity and things of that nature? Yes. I believe the previous email 
he was trying to convince me to meet with him and talk about our, this problem, and I hadn't agreed to yet, so then he sent me this one. Okay. Could you read the email? 63-0-8-2. Good morning. I am sitting here with tears running down my face and in disbelief that you feel so much like you do. I set up an account on Alt to find you and see what you are saying. Do not worry, I will do not do anything else, and really do not care about the others. Your anger is now known, and you can vent, but know that I am here, always have been. I do not understand a lot of what you feel, as I have not, as you say, done this over and over again. One time with Rose I met without you knowing, but you didn't know of her. One time I emailed one girl and was a fool in how I handled it. I am your master and did what I did, not to pour around, but to make and find one for us, period. I tell you, please, do not throw this away. I want you, love you, and will never lie to you again. Never contact anyone, letting you handle this if that is our desire. All the comments say how bad it is that you and I cannot work it out. I want to do so. You are mine. I love you, and you I. I know that this waiting has been hard, but the wait is over. The promise of our life, a life for us and for you that you dream of, is at hand. Do not let it slip away. I love you. I know that I did what I did was hurtful and can never take it back. I only want you, period, no one else. I love all you are and all your, your shortcomings, as you say. I have always put you first, have always said to all that you are my one. I, I always have said of you how I think you're a lovely and a wonderful slave girl to me. So I ask you, is all you say really true? Are you really this unhappy, or are you just hurt, thinking I do not really want to, and have several minor contacts in my situation now coming to a close? Once again, my situation referring to the wife? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now coming to a close, worth the loss of a life about to begin. I love you, Rachel. I ask you for one more chance, but I will not beg you, but really, really desire this for us. Do not let us go. I hope that on Wednesday we can talk, dine, and reconnect, a date to start fresh. I want you, always have, and I'm sorry if you think I minimized you or did not see you. You know I love being with you. That is why I like and am there so much. Do not let us go. I will not. I truly love you, Bob. So you decide to stay with Mr. Bashara and you move forward on the house hunting? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Tell me about that. Do you actually uh, make arrangements to close on the house? Yes. Um, Where was the house located? We had actually one house that we looked at and I think made a made an offer on and had an inspection and at the last moment we turned it down because of things in the inspection. We continued to look for houses and we found the house on Kensington. And what was the address on the house on Kensington? Um, 1011 Kensington. And do you know somebody named Ms. Mike Carm Carmody? Yes. And who is that person in relationship to Mr. Bashara? He's a friend of his from Rotary. And what did Mr. Carmody uh, was there a relationship between Mr. Har Carmody and the house that you uh, ultimately set to buy? He lived next door. He lived next door. And um, what was the closing date on the house on Kensington? It changed several times. Um, it was supposed to be originally early December, I think. Then it changed to late December. Then it changed to early January, and we were going to be... What was the final closing date? The maybe? final closing date was uh, January 27th. January 27, 2012? Yes. Now, from the point in time when Mr. Bashara asked you... Oh, shoot, strike that. From the point in time when Mr. Bashara indicated to you that he was divorced to January 24th, 2012, did you ever see the divorce papers? No, I did not. Did you ask him to see the divorce papers? Yes, I did. More than one time? Yes, I did. Did he ever show you the divorce papers? 
Yeah. No, he did not. Tell me the kind of things he would tell you as to why he wanted to Oh, the first time he told me that he had lost, he couldn't find them, and it, that went several days. And um, when I asked again, he said he couldn't find them, he might have to go get another copy from his lawyer. Um, then the next time I asked, his lawyer was on vacation, I believe. Then. When I finally suggested, why not just ask Jane for her copy, because I was sure she hadn't lost hers and he could just make a copy of hers, um, don't, he didn't respond to me, and that's the last I heard about it. Okay, I'm taking you now to the weekend of January 20th, 2012. By this time, you've been in a relationship with Mr. Shire for approximately four years, is that correct? Three years, three months, and three weeks. Three years, three months, and three weeks. And during that course of time, approximately how many contacts did you have daily when you factor in phone calls, emails, and IMs? Fifteen to twenty. You'd have fifteen to twenty contacts a day. Yeah. And during the course of time that you knew Mr. Bouchard, did you help him work on any of his problems? Yes, I did. And during the course of the time you knew Mr. Shaw, did you come to know his handyman or the handyman he used frequently? with? Yes, I did. Tell me the handyman you knew of through your extensive contact with Mr. Shaw. Um, Ralph Lee and Bob Fisk or Frick or something like that. Fick? Fick. Yeah. You know Ponytail Bob? That's what he called them. I didn't like them. Okay. Yes. So you knew from your extensive contact with Mr. Shire, the Ralph Lee and Ponytail Bob, is that correct? Correct. Did you ever have dealings with a Tom Ramsey, Tommy the Plumber? Yes, I remember him. So you had, you were knowing Mr. Bashara, having 15 to 20 contacts in the day, you learned the people he usually used for work with. Uh, objection. That's the, I, I don't know that that's usual. Okay. Did what were the only people you knew from your extensive contact with the Shire as people he used for work? As far as people that worked for him that he hired were yeah. the, Ralph Lee and Bob Fick and Tommy was a tenant. I think he used him sometimes for plumbing. But. Okay. Yeah. Had you ever before the murder of Jane Bashar heard by a sheriff, mention, utter, say the words, Joe Gens. No, I didn't. Now, the weekend of January 20th, um, are you, do you, do you and Mr. Bashar go anywhere? January 20th? The weekend before the murder. No, I did not go anywhere. Did you go to some BDSM event in Lincoln Park or something? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. I thought you meant away for the weekend. Okay. So the weekend before James Shear's murder, you and Mr. Shear go to a BDSM event, is that correct? Yes. Do you also go to a paint store? Yes. And what was the purpose of you and Mr. Shear going to the paint store the weekend before James Shear's murder? We were looking at sample colors for paints. We picked up a, like a sample book. For the house on Kensington? Yes, ma'am. All ready for the big move? Yes. Did Mr. Bashar tell you that he had told his wife? Objection leaving. Mm -hmm. did, did Mr. Bashar ever tell you he had a conversation with his wife about him moving out? No. And why did he tell you he was still living, or like that? Did he tell you he was living in the same house? As well? Yes. Did he tell you anything about his conversation, or if there was a conversation, telling her about his house hunting and moving out? No, I don't think we ever talked about that. Now, the weekend before Jane <coughs> Bashara's murder, do you become concerned about making this big move? With Mr. Yes. And why are you concerned? 
several reasons. The story for the financing of the house changed a couple times. Um, at one point, it was he was going to stay in the house until it sold, and he and Jane would then split the proceeds. And then he, with his half of the proceeds, he would put that down towards the house, which would make the mortgage manageable amount. Um, then all of a sudden he told me that he had cha totally changed his mind and he had decided instead to borrow the full amount from his mother and so he could move out sooner. He didn't have to wait for the house to sell because he was excited about the house and we'd found it already. He wanted to hurry up and move and then we would pay back his mother just like making mortgage payments but it would be to his mother. On January 20th, 2012, did you demand to see divorce papers from Mr. Bashara? Yes. Did you tell him the consequences that would happen if he did not show you divorce papers? Yes. Would you tell him the consequences would be if he did not show you divorce papers? That I wouldn't be able to give up my apartment, move all of my belongings, basically change my whole life without some kind of proof. And did you send him an email dated January 20th, 2012 at 10.55 p.m.? Uh, exhibit 62, you can handle it. Thank you. Yes, I did. I believe counsel will stipulate to this introduction. That's approved. Proceed. Could you read that? I understand your disappointment and hurt over the fact that I have such a hard time believing you at times, but you have to admit I do have my reasons. I don't think I need to remind you of all the half-truths and out-and-out -out lies you have told me to my face. You have not been honest in the past, as recent as this fall, when I found out, uh, when I found out about Hawaii. Now let me stop you there. What was it about Hawaii that you had found out? My daughter uh, was serving in the U.S. Army at the time and stationed. Just tell me what you found out. I found out that he had taken a trip to Hawaii in the um, spring. With who? With his wife. Okay. And he had never told you about that? Well, he had actually told me point blank he had never been to Hawaii. He couldn't wait for us to go so that we could go visit my daughter. And he was, when I decided to take a trip to Hawaii to visit her at one of the times when I yeah, was I broken don't up. Don't need to know all the bad I'm stuff. sorry. But at any rate, he told you he had never been to Hawaii and you had found out he had been to his wife, mm -hmm. Hawaii with his wife, and you were talking to him about this in the email. Yes. Continue. So now I do not trust you to be honest with me, even though you tell me you are. So if I am wrong for insisting on seeing the divorce papers before I can believe you, I will apologize to you once I see them. We started our relationship with lies, and there have been lies all through it. Every few months I find something else out, so why should it be different now? Before I add my life to yours, I want to know where I really stand with you. Before we entangle our finances and lives, I want to know if this is one more example of you lying to me or if I am, as you like to say, overthinking it. As I said, if I am wrong and you have told me the truth, I will apologize and I will try to rebuild the trust in you that I don't have. I will do my best to believe you no matter what my gut instinct tells me. I will continue to give you the benefit of the doubt as I have. If you have not lied to me about your divorce, then you will be able to say I was wrong for not trusting you. But until I see those papers, you cannot say that to me. You cannot refuse to let me see those papers for myself and expect me to just take your word for it. I cannot do that anymore. And you sent that to Mr. Bashara at the weekend before his wife was murdered. Yes. Do you need some water? No, I'm fine. Did Mr. Bashara ever tell ever show you the divorce papers? No, he didn't. What did he say about your email? Thank you. I, I don't know. I don't remember him. Res I don't think he responded to it. Now, tell me about January 24th. What happens on that day? Um, 
it started off just as a normal day. Um, I went to work. Did he call you in the morning? Oh yeah, he always called me in the morning. Did he call you every morning? Oh yes. Um, Did he tell you on the morning that he had called you that he had talked? Objection to our meeting. Uh, okay. Did he t did he mention whether he had phone conversations with anybody else before he called you that morning? No, I don't think so. Did he mention Joe Gibbs to you that morning? No. Did he say anybody had been threatening him or harassing him? No. Did he tell you he was afraid of anybody? No. Did he say that anybody had been hounding him for money? No. So you talked to him in the morning as it was your normal habit to do, is that correct? Yes. Do you make arrangements to meet? Yes, he was going to come downtown for lunch. And does he? Yes. And where do you have lunch at in the, at approximately what time? I think it was around 12.30, and I believe we went to the campus diner on Cass Avenue by Wayne State. And does he call you later on that evening? Um, called me several times during the day, yes. Now let me back you up a little bit about and ask you about something else that was going on uh, in the months of... Uh, November all the way through January. Had you and Mr. Bashar began to seriously consider someone from for the poly relationship? We had been talking to a girl that that we had been talking to this girl emailing online on that we had met on Alt. And what was what did you know her by? Janet. Janet. And where was she from? Oregon. And had you and Mr. Bashar been speaking with her about perhaps her being the third person in your poly relationship? Yes. Okay. And what happens in January in relation to that? The weekend, I believe, we got back from my daughter's wedding. He went to Oregon for the weekend. Who went to Oregon? Bob did. And what was that? Was that for the purpose of meeting? Yes, so they could meet each other. Okay. And when he came back? How did he get to the airport? I, I think I took him to the airport. Okay. And he, you knew he was going to Oregon? Yes. Okay. When he got back, did he indicate that he had been to Oregon? Yes. Did he indicate that he had met with Slave J? Yes. And did he indicate that he uh, liked her? I don't remember if he said that or not. Was it your understanding that you guys were going to be trying to move forward with this poly relationship with Janet? We were going to continue talking, yeah. With the end result, potentially, her being the third. Maybe, that. yeah. So that happens in January of 2012? Yes. Okay. Now, you have lunch with Mr. Bashar. Do you speak to him in the evening hours? I think, I know I talked to him several times in the afternoon. I don't remember the times except for the 9.15, 9.30 call. Okay. At any rate, at some point mm -hmm. during that night, does Mr. Bashir indicate to you that his wife has gone missing? Yes. Okay. And does he ask you to do anything at that point in time? No. Does he ask you to contact Slave J? I don't think so. Did he ask you to contact anybody say to tell the phone to keep the phone records clean? Objection, Your Honor. This is trying to refresh her recollection. Well, she's got a document that'll help. I'll open the objection later. Do you recall calling? or emailing anyone and saying, Mr. Bashar doesn't want, want you to seesaw contact because he's trying to keep his phone records clean. That was the following day. Okay, the following day. Okay. So at some point, you did, who did you call? I think I texted. Um, well, let me strike that. Let's go back. 24th goes into the 25th, right? Yes. The night of the 24th goes into the morning of the 25th. Correct. So I'm talking about the morning of the 25th. Did you contact? Oh, no, I don't think it was that day. It was... I, 
I don't remember when I did. I think it was in the afternoon of the 25th that I sent her a text.